to run or not to run? That is the million dollar question. So whether you are trying to work this injury out on your own, whether you are not injured, but you want to stay injury free, when we get pain or discomfort, how do we differentiate that? How do we know is that something we need to respect or we can kind of work through? So hopefully I can clear up some common misconceptions. A couple side things is if you are seeing a clinician or you're going to into the healthcare system, just make sure that you guys see somebody that understands you. If they're not a runner, chances are, and we've all been there, they're not going to get it. They don't understand it. They don't understand we are not the same as everybody else. A lot of my mental health is tied to my physical health. So if someone's going to tell me I can't run, I need to know why and I want to know what I have to do to get back to it. So the post today is going to be about the first two objectives is when is it okay to be running with medial, medial knee pain and when do I need to shut it down? Next post, that's where we're going to have more of the objective measures. I wanted that to be an individual post itself. How do I know when I'm ready to return to running if I had to shut it down? Let's not throw common sense out the window. You don't need me to tell you sometimes when you should run or not. Matt, I lost part of my leg this morning. It got chopped off. It's dangling by a thread. I got a marathon this weekend. Do you think it's okay if I run? No, I don't. It's not okay. If it hurts you to walk around the house, chances are you shouldn't be running. At bare minimum, you should be able to go throughout the day without your pain getting worse because running is amplified what walking is. If you can do that, you'll see I'm going to have a little bit of a traffic light system of when it's okay, when it's, when it's uh, yellow, proceed with caution, and when it's red, shut her down. So we got some hard no's. Hard no's are swelling, locking, or limping. That is your body, your knee, trying to tell you it's not okay. It is not ready for impact. If you have these, see a physical therapist, see a physician, some practitioner that treats and specializes with runners that's going to understand you and get it. If it's swelling, that is automatically, then in studies where if I inject saline into someone's knee, let's say four cc's of saline to mimic swelling, instantly reduce range of motion. It alters the mechanics of your knee and your kneecap. Also, it's going to cause pain. And also it causes weakness. It floods the nerve endings of your quadricep and you get weaker, you have inhibition. So if there's swelling, that's not you. It kind of handcuffs us. If your knee is locking, not a good idea. If it locks when you're out on a run and you hit the ground and you hit your head, it's not a good idea. That's where you could do some serious damage. And then finally, limping. Limping a lot of times goes along with swelling, but if it's causing you to change your gait pattern when you're walking because of pain, it is not a good idea to run. If you are compensating, see what the problem is, don't run. Okay, so you didn't have those last three hard no's and you wanna run. Go for it, let's see what happens. It's never good to just shut something down without trying it, that's my opinion. So go out when you run. These are your sorry, no, but not yet. Doesn't mean never, but just not yet, you're not ready. If it progressively increases as you go. So let's say two scenarios. One, you've got zero out of 10 knee pain before you start running. You go and it starts going up. One, two, keep going. If it just keeps going up, four, five, six, seven, and there's a direct correlation with the duration, the longer you go, and the pain increasing or intensifying, whoosh, shut it down, no go. You're in the bullpen for a bit. Now, another scenario is if you have some pain and it progressively increases. You've got two out of 10, you start, and it progressively increases as you go. So either no pain at start or minimal pain at start and it increases. If it continues to increase, whoosh, no go. Also, let's say it plateaus but lingers. You got both scenarios before, zero out of 10 pain, and you go and you run and it goes up to a two out of 10. It stays there, you'll see in a minute, that's kind of yellow light. As long as it plateaus, we're good. But after you're done running, if you're done putting impact through your knee, if that pain lingers for greater than one hour afterwards, no go. That was your body saying too much, let's shut it down. The reality is if when you're running, for the most part, if you've got pain when you're running, then that's a sign that your body telling you. If you are run and you run five miles, you go to bed, next day you're good, two, three days later you have pain, it's not the running. If I hit you in the head with a shovel, it doesn't take you two days to realize something happened. So there's a direct correlation with the loading and your pain. So here's my proceed with caution. This is the be respectful, but does not mean you necessarily have to shut it down. When you are running, two scenarios, 
both it increases, but you keep exploring it, but it plateaus and it stays. So previously we talked about the pain increases and then it inc continues to increase. Here, either no pain, zero, you run, it goes up to a three, stays a three and doesn't get worse, you're good. You have two out of 10 pain, it goes up to a four, it stays there, you're good. So keep in mind, this is for things less than five out of 10. If you're dealing with seven out of 10 pain, use that common sense. It's not a good idea if it's seven and it goes to an eight and stays an eight, that's too high. So we like to say five or greater, stop, no go, call it off. You could have a run and you have no pain and it increases to three out of 10 and then it stays there. You're good, you're done. That first hour afterwards, that's gonna determine was that okay. So it definitely increased when you ran, but if it decreases and goes away within an hour after you're done, that's okay. You can do that again. I might not increase your duration or your distance that you did, but that's not necessarily a hard no like it was before where it takes longer than one hour for it to calm down. So that was the short and sweet first two criteria. Next post is gonna be about how do I know when I'm ready to return to running? So that's where I incorporated you guys. I love incorporating you guys. We had 379 people vote yes, that they were told by a healthcare professional, PT, Cairo, physician, that they could not run, but they didn't give them any criteria for when. They just said maybe six weeks. Well, why six weeks? What if I get better sooner? What if it takes longer than that? So I'm going to hopefully clear up some things if you're a clinician working with runners to have some kind of objective test to go by. If you're on your own, how do I know I should be uh, running or not running? And how do I get back to it? It's gonna be a checklist. I need to be able to accomplish these things before I run if it's a loading or an impact issue. And I'll show you ways to systematically start at the ground and work your way up. So stay tuned next time. If you guys have any questions, any stories, please let me know below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Matt Minard, and I'm so passionate about helping you run safer. If you found this video helpful, if you could please subscribe and share it with your friends, I'd be forever grateful. I have shorter form content on my Instagram, Learn to Run, and then longer stuff here, more lecture based, because I understand we come to different platforms for different reasons. So follow me over on Instagram if you want the short and sweet, and follow me on here if you want the longer breakdowns.